You need friends, not flatterers. You know, my brother-in-law, Christian, he's a surgeon up at Mercy Hospital in Sacramento. He was voted uh, the best surgeon in Northern California by 4,000 of his colleagues. This guy, I said, Chris, how many, how many surgeries have you done? And, oh, probably 15,000. 15,000 surgeries. And then this funny thing happens around Christmas time for my brother-in-law, the surgeon who cuts people. Okay? He cuts people for a living. All, right? all of a sudden, his office starts filling up with little Waterford crystal packages and um, David, Harry and David fruit baskets and Cracker Barrel meat baskets. You know? And all of these wonderful gifts start pouring into his office and piling up on the counter. Who are those from? From the people he cut on. And they give him gifts because they, he cut on them and took out a cancerous tumor. He cut on them and saved them from a ruptured appendix. He cut on them and he took something out or fixed something that was going to harm them in the long run. And they're so grateful and they have a scar from when they were with him at the hospital. And it's the people who were cut on who come back and give the gifts to the guy who cut on him. See the picture? Because it's a cut to heal, not a stab to kill. Better is open rebuke than love that's concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of the enemy. A good friend will cut on you if he's concerned about you. And you see all the qualities kind of going together. It takes a man who's faithful and who knows his role before God in your life. It takes a good man, a man who wants to be good himself and wants goodness to come out of you to be able to do that. It takes a secure man to confront, a man who's secure in God and who can, can withstand, you know, maybe your defensive reactions or your eighth grade responses to healthy confrontation. It takes a humble man to come and confront. And it takes a concerned man who's present and who has permission, as they say in the military, to speak freely. You got a guy like that in your life? You got a couple guys like that in your life? I'll tell you, as a leader, and remember, it's not if you're a leader, it's how you're leading. It's not if I have influence, it's what kind of influence am I having? as a man. If you're a leader and you want your influence to be good, you have to have not only good friendships, but they have to be close enough to you and you have to spend time with them enough for them to make you better. To see more or get answers to other questions you have, check out our Media Vault at everymanministries.com.